Quantity makes the problem worse. A laser engages one target at a time. It has to dwell on that target for several seconds to burn through it. It then has to cool. That means saturation attacks, the thing Israel already faces, are not neutralized by Iron Beam either. They're weaponized against it. 30 drones arriving together, for example, do not get erased by science fiction beams slicing the sky. They queue up. And queues are how systems fail. When the queue gets long enough, the missiles get fired anyway, don't they? Which brings you all the way back to the original cost problem the laser was supposed to fix. Remember that next time an Israeli Spox claims Iran are capable of firing 2,000 missiles all in one go because this thing wouldn't have a cat in hell's chance of stopping such a salvo, even if that claim were true. But because of that, Iron Dome, David Sling and Arrow do not go away. They can't. Their crews do not go home. Their interceptors still have to be stocked. Their radars still have to be maintained. Their command systems still have to be integrated. They're not replaced at all. So Iron Beam does not simplify defence, it adds to it. So from a budget perspective, that's not efficiency, that's adding to the cost. And that, based on the, how this thing is being sold as a cheaper alternative, is nothing short of failure. And that's the first unavoidable consequence Iron Beam creates. Once deployed at scale, Israel's locked into a higher baseline cost of defence from this point onwards, not a lower one. There's no scenario in which Iron Beam reduces the need for missile interceptors to the point that the budget's meaningfully full because every condition that undermines the laser forces a fallback to the systems already in place. 